Welcome. What I'd like to do is show you how to graph as well as identify the center of the foci, the, co uh, the vertices, and the covertices of this ellipse. Now, the main important thing we need to do, first of all, is we need to make sure it's in our standard form. And there's two different forms that we dealt with um, for graphing an ellipse. But for both of those forms, one of the things I had in common was they always equaled 1. So I noticed in this formula, my equation does not equal 1. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is divide by 18 on both sides. And remember, this 18 divides into both of these terms. Therefore, I'm going to have x minus 3 squared divided by 18 plus 9 divided by 18 can be reduced down to uh, 1 half. So it would be y plus 2 squared divided by 2 equals 1. All right, so now I have this in a, a little bit more familiar um, form. And remember, when we're dealing with our standard form for an ellipse, the value a was always the larger number. So you can see that 18 is larger than 2, so therefore a is under my x. And remember, when a was under your x, that meant that the major axis was horizontal. And that's going to become very important as we're dealing with graphing as well as identifying because on the major axis is the center, the foci, and the vertices. So it's very helpful. Once we know where the major axis is, all those points that we're looking for, except for the covertices, are going to lie on that axis. So let's go on and write in the standard form here when we have a major axis under the x. So I have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared over a squared over b squared equals 1. OK, perfect. So um, we'll graph this over here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to identify where exactly is the center. Now remember, the center of an ellipse is simply going to be h comma k. So that's going to be the so it's x minus so it's opposite of h opposite of k. So you can see my center in this problem is simply going to be three comma negative two. Remember it's x opposite of h y opposite of k. So the opposite of these two um, numbers. Then the next thing is we want to be able to identify what a b and c are. And when that identify a b and c are going to help us identify where these points are. So first of all, let's graph our center, which is at 1, 2, 3, negative 2. Okay, So I'm going to put a C there for center. Now remember, we don't really have to draw the as a dotted line, but our major axis is at y equals negative 2. That means the center, the foci, and the vertices are all going to lie on this axis. So next thing is let's go ahead and identify what is a squared. That's going to help us identify our vertices. All right, so a squared, you can see, is 18. So therefore, to find a is going to be the square root of 18, which is equal to square root of 9 times 2, which is equal to 3 square root of 2. Now, the problem with this is this is going to provide us with a decimal, right? And we don't really like decimals, um, especially when we're trying to graph them, because it's a real number. So we're going to have to estimate the best we can, but we'll still write our, verti our points for our vertices um, in our exact format. Now, as far as estimating what is the square root of 18, well, the square, um, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. So I know it's going to be a decimal uh, um, somewhere between 4 and 5. So the next thing is the, ver so let's go and plot our vertices. Now, remember, our vertices have to lie on this axis, right? So therefore, when I'm trying to identify what are my vertices, the x coordinate is always going to change, right? So it's going to be 3 plus or minus 3 square root of 2. However, the y coordinate, it's always going to be the same y coordinate. So that's going to be negative 2. So from my point 3, negative 2, I'm going to go in the positive. So I'm going to add 3 times square root of 2, which is roughly 4 and change, all right? So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be between 4 and 5 more units over. So that's one vertice. And then I have to go to the left between 4 and 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. Now the next thing is let's go ahead and identify the covertices. All right. Now in identifying the covertices, that's going to be what b is going to be. So we say b squared equals 2. So again, we take the square root of both sides. b equals the square root of 2, which again is going to be like a number 1 and change, right? So therefore, I'm going to go up 1, and it's going to be between 1 and 2. 2 squared is 4, so I know it's not that large. Um, so let's just put it there and say that's my covertice. And then I'm going to go down 1, 
and that's my other covertice. All right. Now, again, when looking at plotting the points for the covertices, notice that these are on what we call our minor axis. And the points for these are not going to uh, change. The x coordinate is not going to change. So now when I look at my center, my covertices are both going to have the same x coordinate as my center. But now the y coordinate is going to be different. And it's going to be plus or minus the square root of 2. Uh, lastly, we need to figure out what the foci are. OK, so the foci is the one that we have to work on because the foci is c squared. And we don't have a c squared. But remember, the main important thing that we worked on uh, to find c squared is a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So a squared is 18 minus b squared, which is 2 equals c squared. So that becomes 16 equals c squared, square root, square root, c equals 4. Now again, c is going to be on this major axis. So again, my y coordinate of my foci are going to be the same. It's going to be negative 2. The x coordinate is the only thing that's going to be changing. And we're going to add 4 to 3 as well as subtract 4 to 3. So I can go ahead and simplify. 3 plus 4 is 7, negative 2, as well as um, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, negative 2. And just notice how the foci, the vertices, and the center all lie on this major axis. They all have the same um, y coordinate. So I go over to 7, comma 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And OK. My vertice must be wrong. Oh, that's OK. 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. So my vertice is like kind of right there. And because my covert or my foci is right there. OK. So now, to go ahead and plot my graph, I'm going to go through my vertice, through my covertice, through my vertice again, back through my covertice, back up. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you identify the center, as well as graph an ellipse by plugging it into your standard form. Thanks.